Unlike the people in this gospel, Christianity is a religion of finding good excuses to celebrate God's love in every single aspect of our life. However, when we are full of bad excuses, we tend to miss out on the great things that God wants to give us, especially during this time of preparation for the celebration of the birth of Jesus, our Savior. There are perhaps three kinds of excuses. Bad excuses, irrelevant excuses, and good excuses. All of us sometimes think of very creative excuses for not doing what we should be doing. For example, maybe all of you have done this. I know I have. If we are speeding, instead of thinking that we should slow down, we tend to think of an excuse to tell the police officer if we, ha if we happen to get caught. And police officers spend their entire lives listening to bad excuses, such as these very famous ones. I'm sorry, officer, without my glasses, I couldn't see the speedometer. Or, I know it's a school zone, but I was trying to keep my eyes on the children and didn't notice how fast I was going. Or perhaps, I know I was speeding, but my brakes need to be repaired, so I didn't want to wear them down. Whatever your bad excuse for speeding, an excuse is only an excuse, and it still puts you in danger. In addition to bad excuses, there are also irrelevant excuses. Sometimes when I'm driving near a dangerous looking truck, I think if this truck tips and hits me, it will definitely not be my fault. But if I end up in the hospital or dead, it doesn't really matter whose fault it is. Regardless of whose fault it is, an excuse in a situation like this is completely irrelevant. Therefore, this is an irre irrelevant excuse. Some excuses are simply irrelevant because despite who is right and who is wrong, the consequences are damaging or in some cases deadly. So instead of thinking of a bad or irrelevant excuse to convince others of why we are not doing what we should be doing, it is much more helpful to think of a good excuse to convince ourselves to do what we need to do a bad or an, irrele an irrelevant excuse that we tell others only tries to justify our failures, while a good excuse pushes us to become better individuals in every single aspect of our life, especially our spiritual life. In today's gospel, Jesus tells a parable about a man who invited many people to a big banquet. But everyone made either bad or completely irrelevant excuses as to why they could not come and enjoy the banquet. The first person said that he had bought a farm. The second said that he had bought five yoke of oxen. And the third got married. Why did buying a piece of land, buying five yoke of oxen, or getting married prevent them from attending a big banquet with many other people? They may have provided an excuse, but despite their bad or irrelevant excuse, they all missed the dinner invitation. Today's gospel is not read on this date accidentally. It is read on the Sunday before Christmas to remind us that during these upcoming 13 days, we are preparing for a great banquet, the birth of our Lord. Our faith is compared to a banquet because faith is meant to bring us together as a family into God's house to celebrate a big event. When we gather as a community of faith and share our faith with each other and then help each other grow in faith, then we discover the source of the greatest kind of joy that is possibly experienced in our human life. Our joy, then, is also multiplied when we realize that Jesus has personally invited us to this faith banquet and that in this particular faith banquet, Jesus is also the guest of honor. 
The three people in today's gospel may have had an excuse, but they missed the banquet because they had bad and irrelevant excuses. Our life of faith is very similar. We are always, it seems, full of some kind of excuse. We sometimes make excuses for why we do not spend more time in prayer. A little too busy. Why we don't go to church more regularly. Why we don't read the Bible more often. Why we do not, we, we do not spend more time with our family. And basically, why we do not do what we know we want or need to do. Today's gospel, therefore, challenges us to move beyond the bad or irrelevant excuses to focus on some good excuses. Instead of thinking why we are not doing what we need to do, let us think of some good excuses to make sure that we are growing in our faith every single day. And especially during this time, when the lights are going up, the Christmas decorations are up, and everybody's inviting people, and everybody is buying gifts, this is the perfect time to think of the abundance that God has given us. What good, what good excuse can I give myself for why I want to spend more time in prayer? Think of that. Rephrase the question. Instead of why you don't have time for it, think of an excuse to make it happen. And what good excuse can I give myself for, for preparing spiritually for the birth of our Lord this Christmas? What good excuse can I give myself for doing what I need to do? Christmas invites us to reflect on the beauty, the innocence, and also the glory of the Christ child born in our midst. Despite the billions of dollars that are spent around Christmas, the highest rates of depression every single year are always in January. Why do you think this is so? We may have thought of a thousand excuses to overspend, but we have not thought of a thousand excuses to overappreciate. We completely miss the point of Christmas when our focus is only on eating, drinking, and exchanging gifts. Faith, let us never forget, is a perfectly free gift. It is very much a free gift, like the banquet in today's gospel. We are invited to come, to all of us come, regardless of background, regardless of age, regardless of what we feel we have done in the world or what we have not done in the world. The invitation is open to all. We are invited to come, and we are also invited to come and rejoice. We are not asked to bring anything with us other than our humble and open hearts. During our Christmas rush, and in the midst of the many bad or irrelevant excuses we think of, today is the day to ask ourselves, what are the good excuses we can think of to appreciate God showing us His face this Christmas? And what are the good excuses we can think of to love and to serve God more in every single thing that we are doing?